Have you ever noticed when your children are emotionally triggered, they throw you the hot potato? <laughs> That's what I call it, the emotional hot potato. And the way they do that is often by screaming at you or telling you they hate you. Whatever they're feeling inside that they're not able to tolerate because we all know how intense feelings can feel inside of our bodies. Well, little ones have these sensations that go along with those feelings and they don't understand what's going on. So when those sensations get so incredibly intense, they want to get rid of them. Of course they do. They're little beans. Now, what do they do? They come to the safest person they know, mama or daddy or someone in their world that's safe, and they're going to throw you that hot potato because it is really hot inside. So when they throw that hot potato, I have a little saying I like to say. I like to say, return to cinder. <laughs> now, what I mean by that is, is that if I don't take on the hot potato, and I'm going to explain to you what that looks like. When I take on the hot potato, let's say my child is feeling extremely powerless. Maybe I've asked them to do something and they don't want to do it or they aren't capable of doing it. So they feel intensely powerless. So then they're going to try to power up their energy and they're going to throw it at me basically by maybe saying, I hate you. You don't understand me. And all you ever do is ask me to do these things and I hate you. Now, if I take in that hot potato inside of my being and I have a place inside that believes that that's true, that I am this bad mama or I'm too strict or I'm too strong or basically that I'm asking too much. If that is inside and I have not worked with that in my safe seat, then I'm going to get activated and I'm going to feel those same feelings. I'm going to believe that the story that they're saying is true instead of attuning to the feelings of powerlessness. And then I may throw that hot potato back at my child by telling them how entitled they are or how rude they are, how mean they are. And then that's going to activate their intensity even more. And then we're just going to start slamming each other back and forth and back and forth. So when I say return to cinder, first what I do is I attune to that feeling. I recognize that feeling inside that feeling of powerlessness. And yet over the years, I've been able through my safe seat practice to recognize that feelings of powerlessness as an adult are not dangerous. That I can offer this deep, deep loving kindness to those feelings and stay with them without throwing them out on anyone. And I can learn, well, I've learned that I can wrap those feelings without believing the story that I am a powerless person. So after years of doing this, I'm able to contain my own feelings of powerlessness without them being activated. And therefore, when I return to cinder, I can open my compassionate, loving heart and actually show up for my child in their feelings of powerlessness. Now, what this looks like is, is I can come alongside them. I don't believe the story that I hate you or you're the worst mother in the whole world. That is just the feelings are just talking. Basically, it's saying I'm powerless, I'm powerless, I'm powerless, I'm helpless. And when I hear the truth of the feeling, I can go in and I can put my hand on the side of my, the back of my daughter's back. That's what I'm trying to say down there in the small of her back. And I can say, well, of course you don't want to do that. Of course it feels like I'm always asking you to do things, especially when you're in the middle of doing something that you really want to do. Of course it's hard to switch gears. And of course you feel like I'm going to make you do something and you don't want to do it. I hear you, honey. So in this place, I'm not agreeing that it's okay to be doing what she's doing or not what she's doing, but I'm talking to the feelings. I know 
Can you imagine how powerless? Well, of course you can, because we all know how powerless we felt as children that we couldn't walk out and get new parents. We had to do what our parents told us to do, or we went into resistance and got told that we were mean or rude or bad or defiant, or we felt their disappointment in us. So, of course, if we have worked with that sense of powerlessness and welcomed it and recognized as an adult that we can open our hearts and our beings and that we are not, as adults, we are not that powerless person. We have choice and we have capacity to show up as an adult to our child that is actually more in the position of the victim because they can't walk out, right? So what I want you to imagine is all their strategies, their defiance, their pushing back, their placating, their pleasing, all of those are ways that they're doing their best to take care of their precious vulnerability. The one inside that wants to be seen, heard, and understood, not demanded on or told what to do and when to do and how to do it. So the innocence of both sides are so incredible when we can really sit in our feelings, what's ever arising in us. And when our child throws us that hot potato, we can return it to the sender, but not to slam them back, throwing them the hot potato in a way, I guess you could say, is it comes to me, then I'm cooling it down a little bit and I can return to the sender And since I haven't taken it personally, I can show up next to my daughter, supporting her and listening and seeing her and her big feelings. Thank you for listening to this episode of Parenting Paused. If you enjoyed the episode, do me a favor and share it with your mama friends. You can also leave a review wherever you listen which will support getting the Pure Joy message out. Come on over to the Pure Joy Parenting Practice Facebook page or join me on Instagram to hear more. And don't forget to download your free copy of the Safe Seat course on the Pure Joy website. And while there, check out the offerings page to go deeper in the Pure Joy work.